Joseph Coco. I'm at GMX 2014 on, be on behalf of Becky Hilburn's Art Process blog, Keep on Trucking Nato Soup. If you could introduce yourself, please. My name is Brandon Nadi. Okay, Brian, and what's oh, bringing... Brian. Oh, I'm sorry, Brandon. That's what's, all right, it's okay. what's bringing you to GMX this year? Uh, actually, this is my first GMX I was in, so, okay. so, so like, the curiosity is hit me when I found out about it back at Amtech and also at different conventions, so I always wanted to check it out. It's right. my first time, and also, you know, my first exhibit here, so yeah. Awesome, and you're local to Nashville, I take it, yes, since you did Amtech? Okay. Yes. And uh, you have a, a background in animation, can yes. you tell us uh, a little bit more about how you got started? Okay. Um, I've always, I was always one of those, I've always liked to, I've always liked cartoons and animation since I was a kid. Yeah. Been growing up with the Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry, but then as I got older, I wanted to do cutscenes and video games, so that's what got me into doing pre animation. Yeah. So I was, so I did a couple of, I did a couple of films there, did a couple of projects with pre animation, but something about it, I just felt that I was losing something, that I was losing the passion for it. I was, so I decided to do something with simple, with simple concepts so I could have more control, and that's therefore proper, becomes proper chunk. That's yep. a simplicity of content, simplicity of concept. I like doing short stories, so I like to do short stories to the point, quick, funny, and that's what came about this. Okay, and did the, um, the comic come about uh, after the animation, or it's the way you kind of laid out uh, uh, the ideas for the animation? This came out after the animation, bro. Oh, hold on. Yeah, these came out after the animation. I always start off, I always start off with the storyboards first. Yeah. Just to get the gist of idea of what I want to portray, what I want to say. And then, then probably about a few weeks later, I go ahead and get started on the animation. Right. And now, you will notice that some of the some of the storyboards compared to the animations, it usually changes. Yeah. Uh, some, okay. some, it, there's a dynamic that changes. I always like to try to stick with the um, ideal story of it. But due to some things, like I have to change some things. So. Okay. So, yeah. And you mentioned you weren't exactly like getting your creativity filled by doing 3D animation. Were you involved in the entire process of 3D animation or just like a small cut of that? Like were you a rigger or? More of the animation movement. Yeah. And as more of the animation movement, I could I could make a I could make a 3D model. Yeah. And that, that was okay. That was okay. But I like doing the motion, like the movements and stuff. And what I, see, what I mean by limited, they already like the animation like the animation already has the character already has his phone set up, already yeah. has everything. So what so it's only limited to so much. Yeah. It's only limited to so much space. Like, it's still right, because you can't change the bone systems. You would have to go back to somebody and say, Hey, I'm kinda of restricted with this. Exactly. Can you maybe add a few more joints or whatever so I can get this fluid motion? Mm -hmm. okay. and also basically if I want to stretch out something, I was limited to how much I can stretch it out. So Yeah. So with, so with this one two like two dimensional, I feel I'm more in control. I can make Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Up. Exactly. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I, I think most people probably go the other way around where they start in 2D animation and then they try to move on to 3D. But I think with a lot of software now, it's become pretty easy to do 3D animation. I mean, certainly just to fiddle around. You can't make anything professional without spending some time on it. But um, So uh, did you teach yourself or did you uh, go to school for animation? I went, I went to school for animation. I went to okay. Middle Tennessee State. Okay. I went there awesome. and learned there. Then I got further education down in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Well, I've learned a little bit of animation and visual effects. So I got to know like the I got to know the whole process of how to work a production. Like let's say a music video. That's what I did down there. I did a feature film down there. So. Awesome. And so when I came back, I was working on it to practice. So I'll say one thing. I also got me out of it. Though. If you're not around that head of people, <laughs> you will like you will kind of deviate from it a little bit. But I say I've learned from that, and I said it all turned out to be good. Or I wouldn't have had this right here. Yeah. So I just took I just took all the lessons I learned from 3D and just put them right back into 2D. Okay. And so you're you're funding your projects yourself? It's just something yeah. you do on the side? No, I'm funding them myself. Yeah. Okay. And what's uh. Uh, in comparison to MTAC, I guess, how would you say GMX is going for you? Oh, Do you think well. people are interested in, in anim like uh, your your personal creator intellectual property uh, for animation here? I say people. I would say what I've gained from it is the fact that, well, like I said, 
since it's been my first time, there's something different that I'll, that you would see at different cons. Because when I would go to MTAC and all the other cons, you know, I see I see people, I see Jarrah Mounds with scary tales. He's doing something different with his comics. Yeah. He's like, there's people doing like they're doing their thing, but there was no cartoon. Yeah. Nobody was showing a cartoon. Nobody was doing animation at all. And that was one of my specialties since I was a kid. So it was like, let me go ahead and bring this about. And I know, it, I know it's different for a lot. Of I know it's very different for what anybody's used to seeing. You know, so, so yeah. So just, so just with that, it's just good to get the exposure and show, hey, you know, yeah, like this is a different art form. You know, I want to be able to bring about to the mix and see everything. So, yeah. Okay. And um, a lot of uh, Nato Soups or Becca Hilburn's um, audience is more rooted in comics. Um, how would you say, like, building an audience uh, for your work differs from comics? Do you know? Or is it still the same? You promote yourself as much as possible at conventions and online. Yeah. Just, just anything you do, put it out there. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. It's okay. I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say it's just about the same because in the end it's about the artist itself. The artist itself, whether, whether they do cartoons or whether they do comics or punch or necklaces. It's all about getting the exposure. Like, you, know, you want to get your work out there. People. So it's almost the same process. Okay. Yeah, just about the same. But the, the, the thing that different, the, the difference is what you propose to do. Like me, I'm doing cartoons, he's doing comics. Like, so it's just what your art is. That's like, just the difference. Okay. And would you have any advice for anyone who's considering doing animation or maybe moving from comics into animation? Practice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, was, like, I had, like, it's all about just practicing and staying consistent because animation itself, it can be very tedious because of that. You have to, like, you draw your one character, then you have to draw them again, and another frame, then you have to draw them in another frame, then you have to draw them like this and that. So, this has to just still stay consistent, stay practicing, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be uh, patient as well. Because yeah, that, you don't want to rush a project, but you do. But it does. Like sometimes with some of these ass points, ones, like man, when can I finish this thing? Like, when can I just hurry and finish? And do you, are you posting process pictures as you're developing animation, or you wait until everything is done, or like a, a single like uh, uh, arc is done? I guess. Um, I usually wait till everything's done. Yeah. 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 www.popandchop.com That's where that's where you'll see that's where you see some of my that's where you see my work some concepts yep. and I'm frequent and I'm putting work on there updating regularly yeah, yeah I'm gonna start putting on there more regularly I have about seven cartoons on there right now so after this I'm gonna start putting on more probably the next month or so awesome yeah. so anything um, that we can be looking forward to uh, what what are you looking at posting in the next month um hmm. Just continuation of Pop and Chop or yes. some other things you're working yeah, on? It's, it's okay. continuation of Pop and Chop right now. Yeah, that's why I'm at right now. Okay. So, yeah. uh, and are there any other conventions we'd be able to see you at in the future? You got anything lined up? Oh, definitely. Um, I'm planning on going to Condoga in February. Yeah, in Chattanooga, right? Chattanooga, yeah. I'm yep. planning on doing that. Then I also want to do Antec as well. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I hope you have a good GMX. It was great talking to you, Brandon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph. It was good talking to you. Thank you.